episode 91 of the Real World Wellness Podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Lehman, a nutritional therapy practitioner and the reverse diabetes coach, which is also the name of my website. I see clients in person in Alexandria, Virginia, as well as remotely via Skype video. You can contact me using my form on my website. Again, that's reversediabetescoach.com. Just remember while you're listening to the show, advice and information we provide is intended to be helpful and informative, but is not a substitute for medical advice or treatment. So today I'm going to share with you a couple of chronic conditions that I've been struggling with for several years now and I'm kind of restarting my journey to help reduce symptoms and or even try and reverse them. So the three conditions in case you're wondering are sinusitis, which we're going to talk about today, and TMJ, which is temporomandibular jaw syndrome. Some of you I'm sure out there have it. You clench and or grind your teeth, which can cause a lot of discomfort to your muscles around the jawline over time and and even cause more serious serious problems. Sometimes it's called TMD as well, temporomandibular disorder. And then thirdly, I continue to have osteopenia slash osteoporosis. And the reason I'm saying slash is because I'm waiting to hear back from my primary care doc tomorrow about my lab results. So I know I've had osteopenia for at least 15 years, and when I broke my wrist back in January, the doctors reminded me of this, so I decided to get a DEXA scan. That was something that I discussed with the author of Your Bones, Laura Pizzorno, who also has a risk of osteoporosis. So just the preliminary results leads me to think I'm borderline possibly in the early stage of osteoporosis, so I'm determined to try and reverse this as much as I can. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next episode. I'm going to be reading her book very thoroughly. I'm embarking on more weight-bearing exercises. I've always been a tennis player, and because I broke broke my wrist, I had to take, obviously, Uh, a leave of absence, so to speak, from that, but I'm back in the game and playing three times a week, so that'll help. I've also started a new supplement similar to the one Laura recommended, so it's called New Chapter Bone Strength, and it also has algae from, I'm sorry, calcium from algae, which is the superior to limestone and other sources, according to what she says, and and some studies do back that up. So I will be talking more in depth about uh, what you can do and what I'm trying to do. And part of why I wanted that DEXA scan is to see what my numbers are now. So I have a baseline, and then in six months I can get retested, have that scan performed again, so that I can see whether indeed Uh, my bone density is improving. And then also I will touch on TMJ, um, probably not as much in depth, but that is something, a condition I've had unfortunately since my 20s. And I am getting a new night guard from my dentist. That's one little preventive measure. It hasn't really worked to prevent, when I say preventive I mean from Initially, sometimes it helps with the grinding. I do it less or the clenching, but then I notice I kind of reset. So I'm not optimistic it's going to really reverse any of that, but it does protect your teeth, at least, um, from all the pressure you're exerting on it when you have this condition. I had to have a crown replaced recently, and it got me thinking about the pressure on my teeth again. So. I'm looking forward to getting my new night guard because I'm using an old one and it doesn't fit very well. So these are um, rather mild chronic conditions, but they can be, over the long term, they can be somewhat debilitating. So um, I also hope that the listeners out there with these conditions also share with me their own journey so I can share that on the air. Again, 
you can shoot me a message. Um, on social media is fine. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, um, and LinkedIn, but also, um, and I'm sorry, I'm probably forgetting one there, but those are the main ones. And then you can write me on my website contact form. Again, um, my email is just reversediabetescoach at gmail.com. All right, so let's get started on sinusitis. First of all, what is it? I like to always start with a primer. So, not surprisingly, it has to do with inflammation, and most people have experienced sinus pain and pressure. So those are some of the symptoms at some point in their lives. And the good news is there are a lot of re natural remedies. Don't jump right away to, to antibiotics. I, I recommend the natural remedies first. And as far as some of the causes, um, it could be a, a, an infection actually from a common cold, or it could just be uh, the common cold. Allergies, that's a big one for me. Um, I sometimes think I'm, I'm nuts because I have two cats who are now close to 13, but I found out I was allergic to dander, so I have to uh, keep to try and keep them out of my bedroom, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, you've probably heard of sinusitis, that is when you have a sinus infection. Um, that also can be relieved uh, through natural remedies, and the reason that is is because um, most 96% of those infections are viral sinus infections. So there's no point getting an antibiotic if you're having an antiviral infection. So if you're among the few 4% that has a sinus infection that is bacterial then and you've tried these things then you may want to try an antibiotic so I'm not saying don't ever try an antibiotic I'm just saying it should not necessarily be your first course of action if you can clear it up naturally and even my the nurse practitioner over at CVS Minute Clinic has asked me to wait sometimes uh, when I go to her because they want to see if it can clear up on its own which is good so anyway, what are, what are the sinuses and how that relates to sinusitis? So there are hollow pockets within the bones surrounding the nose. And if you know what pressure, I feel this every day, so I know what it is. That is due to uh, inflammation, as I said, and your sinuses are designed to produce mucus, which drains into the nose. So if your nose is swollen due to inflammation, it can block the sinuses so that they're not draining the mucus. And that is what causes pain, congestion, post-nasal drip, a cough, and tooth or facial pain. A sinusitis can be acute, lasting up to four weeks, usually after a cold, or it can be chronic, which is what I have. It lasts for months or even years, and it, interestingly, it can be without or with symptoms. Allergies, nasal problems, and certain conditions, and this one surprised me, such as cystic fibrosis, can also cause acute and chronic sinusitis, according to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. So I typically experience the puffiness, um, the swollen, the congestion, and then I also have um, some pain and facial pain and pressure. I always feel pressure around above my eyebrows and in the middle, in between the eyebrows, sort of in the indentation area. So I tend to wake up in the morning very sore around there and do some self massage. Now, interestingly, that's not somebody else hadn't thought of this, but as a natural remedy, but it does help to kind of give yourself a nice little facial massage in those areas that get swollen and sore. So another remedy in the list here is flushing your nasal passages. So you've probably heard of neti pot, and I have two, which we'll get to in a minute. So. Apparently, this one is the most studied, and researchers are confident that these saline washes really work. 
quote, saline washes have been steady and proven to be effective and should be the first line of defense against sinusitis. So if you don't have a neti pot, I strongly urge you to get one. They're inexpensive. I, as I, I have two, as I mentioned, and I do recommend a clay pot because it is stir, it's natural material. It is sturdier than plastic, and as we know, plastic has its own issues with the environment, etc. And also, you're going to heat some water up, so you don't want to take a chance on the plastic somehow leaching into the water. Now, having said that, when I travel, I do bring my plastic one with me, but I try make sure I don't heat it too hot. And um, the other important thing with neti pots, since of course you want to avoid getting an infection, is to make sure that you think about even boiling or heating the water enough in a sterile environment. So um, I typically heat the water in a pan that I've cleaned and rinsed thoroughly and then um, put it into the neti pot and let it cool down a little bit. And then I add the saline solution. So I just have restarted my use of neti pot. I don't know why I just took a break from it, but I am suffering, so that prompted me to restart it. So today I went on Amazon.com since I have Prime membership and I uh, just bought a new one and I'm I noticed that the ones that got the five stars were the clay pots and the one I bought for $13.95 is aromatic salt premium ceramic nutty pot and um, I also found out that you can put it in the dishwasher which I didn't know that because again you it's very important to keep it sterile so it has a hygienic solid handle with no cavity to catch and hold water and germs, especially tiered or spout. I think they mean tepid. I'm not sure what that means, but it's it's specially designed so it fits easily and comfortably in the nostril germs. So it'll come with a diagram. Um, it is something that you you uh, put you hold in a way that the water goes in one nostril and out the other and that's what, how it flushes the mucus and I have to say I feel much better I went to my meditation class this morning and I just was a little distracted because I really felt I was not breathing properly through my nose and uncomfortable and the good news is I was able to do my deep breathing but I thought the minute I get home I'm going to <laughs> to use my neti pot and it was it was amazing how quickly it relieved my symptoms so the only thing though is sometimes if you already have facial pain or pain around the sinuses which I had on my left side interestingly not both I had to push through that so some people sometimes and you have to know yourself okay but stop because they feel a little initial pain um, for me, it wasn't so bad that I didn't want to retry. So I tried the second time. It was painful, I'm not going to lie. It was a bit painful on the first try. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to try this one more time. And then the pain subsided. And then I, it really drained and helped flesh out um, my sinuses. So the other thing is to remember to use a saline wash. Now most... Um, they used to come with the clay pots, and when I, you can also buy one at Whole Foods or another organic store. Um, I just have a Prime membership, so it's cheaper, frankly, and more convenient for me to order it on, online. But um, when you order it online, they do not come with a saline pack, so you have to order that separately. Now, another place you can buy these sinus, they're called sinus washes, saline sinus washes at CVS. You can get them very cheaply a whole box of them and they last quite a while so I just use those um, I know some people are getting fancy with their Himalayan sea salt and all that but as long as it's hygienic and um, I'm not sure whether the you want a premium salt but other than that I'm not sure it really matters that much 
Um, so, but you have to replenish the salt every time you use it. So you pour, typically, like I use, I don't use the whole packet. Um, I typically use a half of one, but you want to make sure that um, you're not using old salt either. So back to um, the frequency of use on the neti pot, um, I would recommend that you do it daily. I do it in the morning because I typically wake up pretty congested. So a little self-massage around those congested areas and then uh, flush your nasal passages. It doesn't take long at all, but you need, and I'm going to incorporate this into my morning routine again. And um, you can also try other things. So that's the first thing that I've done, and I will be reporting back to see whether or not it, it helps me long term. So the second thing is bromelain, which is a supplement. It's a protein found in pineapple stems. And I thought this was really interesting that it's been used by prize fighters to reduce swelling. As you might imagine, and I assume they're talking about um, boxing here, that, but it would apply to anybody. But boxing in particular results in a lot of facial blows that can unfortunately, this is why I don't like boxing, I find it very violent. But anyway, uh, bromelain appears to be beneficial and reduces swelling in the nasal passages, according to Robert Graham, who's an MD and PH, and an internist at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. So the important thing with any supplement is if you're taking other medications to check with your doctor first because bromelain may interact with other medications you're taking. Um, you may just want to also make sure it doesn't interact with any other supplements uh, that you're taking just to be on the safe side. So that's something I can help you with because I do this all the time for my clients. And then of course you want to follow the exact dosing instructions. Third thing you can do is take steam. You've probably thought about hot water vapor that can moisten the sinuses. You can sprinkle a few drops of eucalyptus or menthol in the shower and steam up your bathroom. Now, I love this idea because I am a big fan of hot, steamy showers. I, because I tend to get some muscle soreness, I just, and all the time, and I had bursitis recently due to my broken wrist, which just seemed to set off other things. Um, I would, I found hot water to be very helpful. Um, sometimes, frankly, people will clear their sinuses in the shower. You may think that's gross, but that is one way to do it. Um, so that also can loosen. So the point of that is it loosens up your mucus and debris that is stuck inside your nose. So staying hy hydrated helps your body in many ways, including keeping your sinuses moist. Now, that is advice I give all my clients, regardless of whether they have sinusitis or not, is the importance of staying hydrated. And I always say water is underrated. So you want to either drink eight glasses a day as kind of a rule of thumb, that's eight ounce glasses, or um, perhaps a little more precise measurement is to take your body weight and divide it by the amount of ounces that you're going to drink. Now I, I prefer 16 ounce glass because it just lasts longer and I, I know from my weight, I should be drinking at least four of these daily. So take your weight and divide it by 16, and then I'll tell you how many glasses um, of those you should be drinking. And you don't have to, if you're like, you know, 200 pounds or more, you don't have to exceed, you know, you just don't want to exceed like um, six or seven 16 ounce glasses. Um, you can overdo it, so do you don't want to do that. Um, so I would, I would stop at 200 pounds for that measurement. Also, um, a third thing you can do, I'm sorry, a fifth thing, is to spice it up. So you probably, at some point in your life, has had some uh, hot pepper, and you know how that just, your sinuses and your nose start running and, and you just your eyes may be tearing up and so on. Well, that can help clear your sinuses. So if you like spicy foods, um, 
you know, be, don't overdo it, obviously, but consider adding some hot spice to your meal. Now, even hot peppers can help you lose a little weight. They can also jumpstart your metabolism a little bit. So, other spicy foods include horseradish, wasabi, uh, which is pretty popular these days, and mustard and hot peppers, as I mentioned. So, that's another way to open up your nasal passages. Now, this one may... Uh, can get a little more complicated, but allergy proofing your home. So allergies can make sinus pain worse. So I had to really clarify my, for myself, it's the chicken and the egg issue here. I have both. I have allergies and I also have sinus pain. So I'm just going to take it at face value in that allergies can make sinus pain worse. I would definitely agree with that. So how do you allergy proof? G-proof your home. Um, there are guidelines from the American Academy of Otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. Um, but you want to get rid of things like dust mites. You can install an air filter system. I have tried a few over the years. Didn't find them to be all that great, to be honest. Um, they, had sort of, they were expensive and had limited value, but that was several years ago. So you may want to Google air filter systems. Um, using bedding with allergen barriers. Um, one of the things that I have done is buy allergen uh, washing liquid so that when I wash my clothes I can use that and also wash the comforter and my sheets and that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I have cats with dander who like to sleep in my bed. Even better, don't even let them in your bedroom. I was advised that and it's a little more complicated for me because I have cats who are very persistent bang on my bedroom door when I close it and get all upset so sometimes I let them in but I was told early on not to do that so I have to admit I haven't always followed my own advice with uh, and I'm the one who probably paying for it but if you that is I do try to keep them out um, and it's better if you just start out your pets that way if you have any allergies to dander um, especially with cats. I, I think I've heard cats have more dander than dogs. So, um, but it applies again to dust mites and other allergies. So it helps to know what you're allergic to so you can try and prevent that. Another thing with pets that I do, there's some dander serum that you can apply to a cloth and then coat, wipe their fur. Um, it says every week. I do it at least once a week. I, you might even want to do it more often using a HEPA filter in your vacuum cleaner. I have that. Um, so, of course, dander and dust mites and all that can collect in rugs and other parts of your home. So it's important to vacuum often. I, I try to vacuum minimum twice a week, often sometimes every other day practically. So wherever your cat shed as well, so dander is in there first, so you want to try and um, always brush your pets as well and collect as much fur, you know, the loose fur uh, from them. So those are just some tips about that. Using a humidifier, number seven, um, that can help keep the air moist, but you have to make sure to keep it clean, especially if you have mold energy, allergies. So I happen to be allergic to mold, dust mites, and some other environmental things, so that's good advice. Um, because a dirty humidifier can breed mold. Also, you don't need to use a humidifier when it's humid. That seems like, of course, right? When I read that, it's like, no kidding. But then I thought, well, not everyone, including me, I hadn't really thought about that because um, sometimes I probably run a humidifier even in the summer, but then there's no reason to because Unless you're in a dry place, I should qualify that. So I'm in the Washington, D.C. area, and we get lots of humidity in the summer. So summer just seems like it's, it's not the time to run a humidifier uh, where I live. Um, so you want to keep an eye on the humidity level, which can vary, of course. Um, so I notice that I tend to feel better when it's more, um, it's rained. That helps wash out pollen. I also have some uh, allergies to pollen, so. But also, humidity can make me feel a little easier to breathe, and that makes kind of intuitive sense. So, 
the humidity level that you want to go for is about 35 to 50 percent. That's ideal. If you start fogging the windows, the humidity level is too high. So again, only use the humidifier during the dry months. The eighth thing you can do is apply warm compresses. You can use a warm compress to help heal the nasal tissues and keep them moist. So that's something I want to try. Again, I like heat, so filling um, a deep bowl or a pot with steaming water. And you can also place your face over it with a towel around your head to breathe the steam in. Now, I know some people have tried that with eucalyptus or menthol, and that works too. Um, or you can just uh, apply it to your nasal passages. But you have to be careful, you know, to just keep it warm or steaming hot, but not, you don't want to burn yourself. So there's a happy medium there. You can also follow up the warm compress with the cold compress, much the way you do with hot and cold um, uh, packs that you apply to sore muscles. So that might also help relieve sinus pain. So you might want to experiment a little bit there. Um, we talked about antibiotics already. Um, the other thing that I'm sure you've heard about in the news and other places, hopefully even your doctor, is that if you have too uh, much use of antibiotics, in other words, you're using them a lot, indiscriminately, that can lead to antibiotic resistance and the development of superbugs. And as I mentioned before, um, less than, I'm sorry, 2% of these infections are bacterial. I think I said 4. It's less than 2. So be, uh, because the vast majority are viral, you don't need to use antibiotics, and you just want to take a watch and wait approach and see how you do without them. Now, if you have an acute um, case of sinusitis, even that, antibiotics did little to reduce symptoms at three days of treatment and provided only small benefits at day seven. That's according to a study published in JAMA, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2012. So interestingly, quality of life improved over the 10-day treatment in patients receiving both placebo and antibiotic. Placebo is no treatment usually. So know when to see the doctor. If the sinus pain does not improve with the over-the-counter help or, you know, these natural, what we're talking about here are natural remedies, your doctor can perform a CT scan of the nose and sinuses to look for anatomical blockages that can be treated surgically, such as deviated nasal symptom or nasal polyps. Um, I think it's good to see an infectious disease or, and or allergists just to get to make sure there's nothing structurally going on. Um, I, I had that done just to make sure because I was complaining when I was younger. This was like 20 years ago. And he reassured me that I was breathing and you know, there was nothing structurally wrong. Um, but if you have sinus pain and you have a fever, you should see an ear, nose, and throat specialist because you may need more aggressive treatment than what natural remedies provide. So I would go with uh, the natural remedies first, but again, if you have certain conditions or pain that really is, is feeling more uh, bad for more than a week and you have a fever especially, then you want to you wanna act on that and contact a physician. So those are my pointers on natural remedies for sinusitis. I'm going to try bromelain as well. I'm working on, I've already allergy proofed my home to a certain extent, but I need to keep the cats out of my bedroom. Um, staying hydrated, drinking lots of water for me is something I already do. Um, I think I want to add some eucalyptus or menthol to my steamy steam shower. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to be trying out and doing, so I'll report back on that. Also, I plan to, as I said, talk more about what I'm going to be doing for osteopenia, what I've started to do. So stay tuned, everyone, for that episode, and have a great, healthy week.